years ago, I noticed that there was these weird fruits on the ground every er, late September, early October, and I um, had no idea what they were. Apparently, colloquially, they're known as pineapple guava, and um, also known as fioja, which I'm probably mispronouncing, but um, they are basically a guava that tastes like a pineapple, has a pear-like consistency, and it's basically pure sugar. They're great. Last year, I made a farmhouse ale with them that I actually still have some of that rounded out really well. So this year, I think I'm gonna make a pineapple guava pineapple IPA. So I'm gonna juice a bunch of these guys and then go buy some pineapple juice, you know, just standard bowls or whatever, and uh, see how it turns out. I've always really liked IPAs with pineapple juice. There's some something about the acidity and sweetness that uh, gives it almost a creamy flavor, um, I found. So I've been harvesting. And fortunately to harvest, all you have to do is shake this bush. Um, so let's get to it. Today I'm relegated to my house uh, because I'm waiting for a maintenance guy to show up. So I'm, instead of using RO water, which I usually do, I'm going to try to use Camden tablets. So these tablets are usually used for wine, but uh, they also do a great job of uh, turning the chlorine and chloramine in your water into sulfite, sulfites, I believe. So because I'm using so much fruit in this beer, I wanted to accentuate the hoppiness uh, with my water additions. So I'm using the hoppy profile on Brewfather. Um, it calls for one gram of calcium chloride, seven grams of gypsum, and two grams of Epsom salt. So this amount of gypsum will actually help bring down our mash pH. Um, you typically want a pH of 5.2 to 5.5, and gypsum's great at bringing it down. Alrighty, so I'm going to add this straight to our water. We're almost at temperature, so hopefully it'll have time to uh, mix it all up before we throw in our grain. So for malt bill on this IPA, I'm doing a super simple bill. Um, I'm just going to do 11 pounds of Pilsner and 8 ounces of caramel 10 to give it a little sweetness to counteract some of the acidity from the pineapple juice I'm going to add. And I've actually already milled it uh, using my Monster Mill uh, at a super fine setting, uh, about the width of a credit card. And we're about ready to mash. So I'm gonna double check that my temperature is still on point and then do a pH reading and do my first specific gravity reading. I just got this weird meat thermometer that I kind of love. It is a probe and then goes somewhere else, so it's very easy. So it looks like my temperature is pretty on point. Um, I'm at 151. I was aiming for 152, um, but that's fine. Fine with me. Um, so I'm going to take a specific gravity reading with my refractometer. Let that sit for a minute while I take my pH. So pH is about 5.4. You're really not supposed to take pH while it's still hot, but I have found that it uh, it works out pretty well anyway, at least with the one that I have. So my specific gravity, at the moment it is about 13.7 bricks and with this refractometer you have to convert for work um, so you have to take a lot of calibrations and everything when you first get it um, so I'll plug that into my brewfather tool and then I'll know exactly what it actually is
because I'm using a fruit that's native to New Zealand, I thought it might be fun to use Matuka hops, uh, which are straight out of New Zealand, and uh, some Galaxy hops, which are Australian, which, you know, same hemisphere. So I'm going to use Galaxy for my bittering additions, and I love these waterproof markers because I can draw all over my glasses. So I'm doing um, one ounce of Galaxy at 30 minutes. And then I'm doing two ounces of Matuka, one at 10 minutes and one at one minute. And with the uh, Matuka at 10 minutes, I'll also throw in some yeast nutrient and a Wolflock tablet to help break up the proteins. So I'm adding my 30 minute edition of Galaxy Hops. And here's my 10 minute edition of Matuka with a work block tablet and some yeast nutrient. This is my final hop edition at one minute and it is Matuka. When you're using a hop spider like this, sometimes the hops will not fully get in the wort, so you gotta mush them around a bit. So my one minute is about up. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn off the heat and then I'm gonna start my chiller. I'm going to stop this pump and what I'm doing is I'm actually pitching on top of a, a yeast cake from a beer that I just transferred, another IPA. I wanted to reuse the ale yeast that was in here, it was just the Suffail 05 that I always use. So I'm just going to stick that in and run it through the chiller and straight on top. My temperature is a little high for pitching yeast. That's as cool as I'm going to get it because my tap water is the exact same temperature as it. So I'm just hoping that the yeast in there is about 60 degrees. Hopefully it'll just uh, cool it down a little bit. Okay, so to prepare the pineapple guavas, I'm just going to, well first I wash them and now I'm just going to spray them with some sanitizer. I'm also going to spray all my equipment. And all I have to do is take a spoon and scoop it out. Okay, let's see how many of these we got. Alright, so we got two pounds, two ounces of the pineapple guava. And I'm actually going to throw these in the freezer because I don't want to juice them. And then uh, once the beer started fermenting in a couple days, like when it's halfway through, I will dry hop with these, some more Matuka, probably around two ounces, and some pineapple juice, just one of those big dole cans, and hopefully it turns out.